Hello, I'm going to be reading through Acts, and my brother said that he was going to read through Acts on July 4th, and I don't know if that's like a tradition to him or whatnot, but uh, I decided that uh, today is July 1st, and I'm just going to try to read through the book of Acts, you know, as quick as possible, before the 4th, at least, and uh, hopefully get it done maybe in a couple of days. There's a whopping 28 chapters in there, but uh, I want to read through them and uh, just give my ideas, so like a run-through videos of each chapter, and I'm adding each chapter to the website so I can easily go for expositories from there. But for now, I'm just going to start adding chapter by chapter to the website. Before, when I had the uh, forum thing on the website that I had issues with, and I had to pretty much save everything and get rid of everything, I had the whole Bible, uh, up there, and I had even the uh, apocryphal books and different creeds and stuff, so kind of rebuilding that, and you know, I just sat down for a few days and just put the whole Bible, it doesn't take a lot of time if I just dedicate, you know, a whole whole days to it or whatever, but now I'm just kind of cautiously, more slowly going to do it, um, and maybe at some point I'll just go ahead and put it all up there real quick, but for now I thought it would be a good idea, I would like to go through the book of Acts, and, um, and, uh, so I can, I can share my thoughts, and I can also get it started on the website to, to go more deeper into it. But let's start with Acts chapter 1. I've already put this on here. The uh, e-sword, and it gives different titles for different sections, so I'm having them on there. And uh, it starts with the promise of the Holy Spirit. And uh, I don't know about all the, the geography and all the people and stuff in Acts right off the top of my head. It's been a while since, you know, I've read through it multiple times. But I think that it was Luke that, that wrote this and um, the same Luke from the Gospel of Luke. And um, I don't remember who, who Theophilus is, if that's like a different name for somebody. Uh, but anyway, Acts chapter 1 verse 1. The former treaty have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. And so he's basically saying, you know, I think that these are, you know, uh, you know, he spoke of the things that Jesus did and taught in the Gospels. And Acts uh, chapter 1 verse 2, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. And so he talks, he's talking about Christ. He's talking about when he was risen, you know, the ascension, his, uh, his resurrection and his ascension. And after that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles. And so... You know, each believer is filled with the Holy Ghost, and um, the Holy Ghost also has different titles, like the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God. And God uh, speaks through the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Holy Ghost is God. And uh, so that's how, you know, God speaks to us as well through the Holy Ghost. He gave the commandments to the apostles who He'd chosen. Um, so let's continue to Acts chapter three, 1 verse 3 to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God uh, so he showed himself after the resurrection, uh, 40 days, um, while well, being seen of them, 40 days, and speaking. Oh, sorry, maybe after this, after the ascension, I mean, he rose three days after the grave. Uh, I don't know, I'm kind of mixed up on the timeline here, but I'm also thinking of how, I think I remember reading from the Church of Christ, and I don't remember all the details right now, maybe... Talking about the apostles, like, is it specifically, like, the twelve apostles, or is it in a sense that, like, all believers are apostles? Um, you know, was he just seen by the twelve, or was he seen by, by all of them? I mean, I guess minus Judas also. Um...
and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard from me. Uh, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Okay? There was a lot of controversy over the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but it was basically, you know, a new, you know, it was basically, you know, an empowerment for the apostles uh, to preach and such. Um, <clears throat> wait for the promise of the Father. So I don't really know what a lot to say about that. Um, I might be more confusing trying to get into that. I have to uh, study into that a lot more again. The ascension, uh, okay. When they, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Okay. So, I don't know, was it, did they see him 40, 40 days after the resurrection, before the ascension? I'm guessing it. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Okay. It's interesting. Um, maybe, I think, maybe what they thought about restoring the kingdom of Israel and what, um, in a sense that they thought and the sense that Jesus was saying were different senses. Um, which the Father has put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnessed unto both unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So when he talks about the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon them, he, he immediately talks about, you know, them evangelizing um, to the Jews and to the whole world and to the uttermost parts of the earth. So I'm trying to think about how they're asking about the you know the kingdom of Israel being restored, and I'm wondering if they're thinking like an Old Testament kind of like in the days of David and stuff. And um, but he's saying, you know, the kingdom of God are, are are all those who believe, those who hear and receive the gospel. And he's saying, you know, you'll be spreading the gospel, and that's how the kingdom is going to be built. Um, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Okay. And so at the beginning of this, it kind of talks about, it kind of covers, you know, before the ascension and stuff like that, and the ascension itself, and then, and then it kind of goes into more detail, going through the events that happened a little more specifically. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a, and a cloud received him out of their sight. This is very interesting, too, um, about his, his literal ascension. Um, you know, I think he, he just, he ascended and, and disappeared from their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into the into heaven? The same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall also come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And so, um, a lot of people have interpreted that many different ways how how Jesus uh, will return as he's as, as you've seen him go into heaven. And um, <clears throat> some people think it literally as, you know, Jesus ascended literally in, in the clouds and he's going to come back, you know, from the clouds and descend or whatever. I think it has more to do maybe with the position uh, of Jesus, um, you know, as he came to the earth when he was born, when he became incarnate, you know, he was, um, he humbled himself, but 
during the ascension, he was glorified. He was the glorified Christ. And so when we go to heaven, when we see Christ again, we will see the glorified Christ. Um, but it's still kind of, I guess, is... Uh, trying to think, you know, why are they saying, why are you gazing up at heaven? Um, you know, I think it's, you know, I also get this feeling that it's kind of like, why... You know, you're looking for him as though he's gone, basically, but Jesus isn't gone, right? He's in us, and he is he's reigning, right? He is reigning as the Lord. And so, um, we don't have to have this sense that, uh, that he's gone from us, you know, he's there. In a sense, I don't know, um... So let's continue. Matthias chosen to replace Judas. So Judas was one of the twelve disciples. He betrayed Christ. He committed suicide. So they had an opening, I guess, in the twelve disciples. Um, Acts 1, verses 12, Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. Hmm. I wonder what it means that it's a Sabbath day's journey, like one day, or I don't know, a week. Acts one thirteen, and when they were come in, they went up into an upper room, where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon, Zelotes and Judas the brother of James. So not the Judas that committed suicide, that betrayed Christ. Acts 1.14, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication, with women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of names together were about 120. So there was 120 uh, people. in the room. It was the 120 that I was talking about earlier with the apostles and stuff like that. There was something about the Church of Christ about the 120. Uh, I don't know if they're saying like how every man, man or disciple, everyone or disciples that are believers, I don't know, um, which we are, but I don't, I don't remember what the controversy about that was. I'll have to work into that. Men and brethren, the scripture must needs to have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by mouth of David spoke before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. Which was guide to them that took Jesus. Hmm. For he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Uh, oh, G oh, Judas was the guide to the people who took Jesus because, yeah, he betrayed Jesus. And I was just thinking about Acts 14, where they continued in one accord with prayer and supplication. All these believers uh, prayed together. Um, Acts 117, for he was numbered with us, he had obtained part of his ministry. I read that. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and, fall and <clears throat> falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst. And all his bowels gushed out. Um, so kind of a gory death there for Judas. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch that the field is called, in their proper tongue, Akeldama. I don't know how it's pronounced. Akeldemia. Ah. That is to say, the field of blood. So they called this the field of blood, where Jesus, where Judas died, where he purchased this field. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein. And his bishopric let, let another take. What's a bishopric? I don't know. But you know what? 
So they're re they're referring to the book of Psalms, saying that this was prophecy of when Judas uh, committed suicide. Or, or maybe not that it was prophecy, maybe that this, you know, it's just, um, it applies to that, maybe, I don't know. Wherefore, of these men which have accompanied with us all the time, that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. Beginning from the baptism of John unto the same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained with a witness, with be a witness with us of his resurrection. So, basically saying that the next person that they're going to choose to replace Judas has to have been there all through this time. And uh, so, in Acts 23, uh, verse 23, they appointed two, Joseph called Barsabas, who was surnamed Justus, and Matthias. And, and they prayed, verse 24, and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, shew whether these two thou hast chosen. And then verse 25, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. Verse 26, and they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. So they chose Matthias. Very interesting how they, they casted their lots. And um, there was something about in the uh, Old Testament where the priest, uh, they used something, I don't remember what was it called, the priests used something where they flipped like dice or something where they would ask, I think they would pray and ask God to, to give an answer or something, something like that. And, and depending on what side this thing turned on, they would go with it. And it kinda, it's kind of the same as they're casting the lots. Um, I haven't looked into that for a while, so I don't remember. Basically, this whole first chapter is talking about, you know, after the resurrection and then the ascension of Christ. And... Um, they're awaiting the um, empowerment of the Holy Spirit that was promised to them, and they're finding another disciple to replace Judas. And so, um, <clears throat> I guess uh, there is really some importance in the sense of uh, these twelve disciples that uh, there there needed to be twelve, and. Uh, so, there's a lot more there that I'm sure that can be gone into, but just some thoughts. Um, I definitely need a lot of brushing up on this, but there's that. That's seven more chapters to go, so I'm going to get going through them. God bless.